Okay, I got this uh, tri filler um, uh, Bedini oscillator rosemary Ainsley inductive element hybrid oscillator going on here with this inductor um, resistive inductors in series in between the coil and the uh, collector of the transistor. And so I got it running on a 24 volt battery bank and uh, have the recovery winding charging this cap right here and I changed to a bigger cap a 30,000 microfarad uh, 60 volt cap and uh, right now the battery voltage is at 2.04 2.06 and what I want to show is that um, well first of all this inductive heating element is um, not really that warm but I'm using very low power right now and I'm going to change the frequency and I'll show what the input and output actually looks like on this particular circuit the output well here's just scope and I'm just uh, really low voltage right now this bottom one is the input what the coil is seeing this top one here is what the output uh, winding is uh, sending out and I'll zoom in so you can really see uh, what it looks like Plastic there is 65, wood is 64, that wood is 64, 65, so 64, 65 degrees is the ambient temperature of everything in here. Um, and as soon as I come over here, 65, 66, 67, 68, 68 degrees. So it's a few degrees above Fahrenheit, so that absolutely is producing warmth there's no doubt about it um, and another thing that I want to show is that uh, it's definitely running on the battery bank that white cable right there is going to the power this black cable right here on the power wire going into the uh, coil is connected to the positive of this and I have a unique arrangement here but what I want to show is that uh, This cap is feeding back to the input, but that battery doesn't see it. Okay, and um, this battery bank, okay, if I disconnect this cap, that means the battery has to draw more. That's why you see it uh, drop down real quick to 12.05, um, or at least you'll see it drop to 24.05. Uh, I want to hook this back up you're going to see it jump back up to 2406 and stand there pretty strong that's because as the circuit takes it from the cap it needs less from the battery and that's why it's more stable at 2406 and if I disconnect the cap from the input like I just did you're going to see that battery go you're going to see it drop to 2405 okay so this is reducing the amount necessary to be drawn from the battery and it is coming from the output winding this is basically just transmitting the spike the inductive spike right back to the input okay so um, and to show that this really is in the loop what I can do is I can show you that it's at 2406 I'll disconnect the battery totally it's not even connected that's just a multimeter right there voltmeter and this battery is um, 2407 and you, could, and you saw that it hit 2408, that's because the battery is rising because it was really in the loop. And you can see that it's 100% just running on the uh, capacitor right now. That's it. There's no battery power involved. Um, it's just running from a uh, stored up energy in the capacitor from the recovery. So obviously the spike can be recovered and put to use. Not only that, it's performing work and this heater is warmer than ambient. So it's at 2407 because the battery is just recovering a little bit and as I put this battery back in the loop right here at 2407 you'll see that it surged down real quick 20 see it hit like 2371 I mean that's just obvious that it um, of course is in the loop now uh, I can disconnect that it's going to draw more for the battery put that on draws less from the battery it's as simple as that all while it's performing work battery voltage pretty much stays up and it can run on the cap for quite a quite a while if I disconnect the input if I disconnect the battery 
it will run on the cap and sustain on that for a while. Of course, the capacitor will eventually go dead after a while, but the point of this demonstration is just showing that the inductive spikes coming off that coil is um, being put to uh, put to work. Um, I think this proves a point that you can take the spike and put it right back to the front side, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So what I want to show you is actually what the input and output look like when I I'll change the frequency so you can see. Um, and I'll zoom in on the scope and you can see what the output looks like and that should give you kind of a hint what I, at least what I'm doing here so here here's a scope shot of the um, this is the front side coil you can see that it gets charged and then discharged charged discharged and you can see the cap uh, this is what the cap is receiving on the recovery winding and you can see that as it gets charged that drops down because it's obviously um, uh, power to run the front side is coming from the cap it's dropping the cap bringing it down here and as soon as the front side coil discharges and goes down you get the spike right here which is ringing and all this is charging the capacitor back up and then on the next cycle, here comes the um, charge on the primary coil, uh, which drops the voltage um, down, goes over, and then after the um, front side coil discharges, you get that spike, and then it rings, and it charges the cap, and that just repeats. So anyway, this is what it looks like when you have the output feeding the input. Okay, so another thing uh, I want to show is just at a different um, frequency, a different setting at the base of the uh, transistor that right now the battery is at 2398 and it's hooked up with the recovery feeding back to the front. And you saw that voltage drop because I just disconnected the cap from the input. And this wire right here is um, this wire is going straight to the power where the plus on the battery is connected to. So anyway, right now with the, with the recovery being sent to the front, you can see the difference a little bit better at this setting than the other setting. So the battery is sitting at 2397. I disconnect this uh, the recovery cap from the input and it drops to 2394 obviously because the battery has to produce uh, ha has to use more um, because recovery isn't being utilized and if I hook the recovery back up the voltage obviously you know jumps back up and when it finally settles it's above what the battery is um, without the cap and disconnect it drops to 2391 92 I connect the cap and it bounces back up 2395 2396 okay and again I can disconnect the battery from the circuit and you can see that it jumps up because obviously the battery truly is in the loop and when I connect the battery again you see that little surge and then it bounces up Tw almost 24 volts exactly uh, 2398 disconnect recovery cap you can see 2394 I connect the recovery cap 2394 and it's uh, pushing up to 2395. And when I disconnect the input battery, just running on cap, it can still sustain on all the recovery. And so what you're seeing right here is basically when this coil is powered from the cap, as soon as it charges, the inductive spike is going uh, into the cap and um, is going right back to the uh, input for the next cycle when it self-triggers.